Welcome everyone to another episode of Test Chamber. I'm your host, Andrew Reiner. Today we're taking a look at Runic Games' Torchlight 2. I have Adam Biesener here. Hello. And Matt Miller. Greetings. Uh, I think all three of us were fans of the first game. Oh, I yeah. played it on Xbox 360. Adam obviously was PC. What about you, Miller? I played a little bit of both. But to be honest, Torchlight 2, while I, I played a good bit of it, didn't blow me away. And yet here with Torchlight 2, I played it for like 20 minutes and I instantly fell in love. It's real fun. I'm yeah. uh, driving my, my character that I've actually been playing here because it sinks through the Steam Cloud, which is great. Uh, the story is not worth paying attention to as usual, but that's fine. Um, you're making good way through this. You're up to level 25 already. Yeah. And your character looks really badass. Yeah, he looks pretty cool, huh? Let's, uh, let's check him out. Oh, oh, it doesn't zoom in. Never mind. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's a bunch of stuff that I that I've gotten from what the heck are these? I have no idea. I have no idea. What's You're gonna going be on. fine. Hopefully. Well, I can I can explain yeah. a little bit about what's happening as Adam yeah, what gets beaten that? up. He's uh, beating he's... on a pot with legs. <laughs> that's right. So the uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but you're playing the Berserker that's right. character, right? This is one of four classes that are uh, come with the core game. Uh, and all the classes are really awesome. I, I really like the way that not only has the game gone for this kind of steampunk aesthetic, but the character classes are not your standard, uh, you know, action RPG classes. You've got this guy, the Berserker, who's a lot of fun. Uh, just your straight up melee, punch things, run real fast kind of kind of character. Think like almost like Wolverine, but in like a fantasy setting. A little bit, yeah. Um, then you've got uh, uh, the Ember Mage. Uh, which is a kind of your, as close as you're going to get to kind of like a traditional wizarding role. Hmm. Um, you've got the engineer, which definitely kind of plays into that whole steampunk vibe. What uh, is this? And the class that I'm playing, which is the Outlander, which is kind of this like pistol wielding, shotgun wielding, magic using class. Is that a new them. class for this game? I, they're I, all new. Classes. Yeah, they're all new. Yep. Uh, which is awesome. Uh, they they follow familiar themes uh, of of you know melee versus me uh, distance magic and stuff like that. But they definitely all have their own unique feel to them. Why do you have a cool like dog head over your your character? What was that? That was uh, that's actually a, a helm, a unique helm that dropped off of a boss in the first act. Um, the uh, a little bit while back, you saw some skeleton archers show up. Uh, those are actually my pet cast. Uh, you can find uh, items, or uh, excuse me, you can find spell scrolls, which are items, and uh, you can either put them on your character or you can give them to your pet, and your pet kind of uses them in its own little AI way. Um, but it's but it's a neat little support thing that you can get that uh, uh, that is just something you don't have to worry about because despite the fact that it's a simple you know Diablo click on things game, uh, there's still oh gosh. <laughs> Let's not die in test chamber. All right, excellent. Good work, Adam. All right, um, there's still a lot going on, especially I'm playing on veteran difficulty, which is which is the harder difficulty. Um, so I have a little bit of an excuse there. So wait, I think you're taking your pet a little too seriously. It's just a dog, right? Uh, is it? The, the or is it a spider? <laughs> Oh. The, the pets, uh, for people who didn't play Torchlight 1, uh, the pets are this really cool thing that the game does that, A, it's really fun to just have a little pet that runs around with you, but they've actually oh, be done cool things with it where you can actually equip your pet with different equipment. You know, if he's got a one collar versus a different collar, it might have different effects, and he has special attacks oh he's going to do. Um, and he's also going to be able to go in uh, and and help you handle inventory stuff. Not only does he have his own inventory space, but he will go and sell items for you, which for most people when they're playing Diablo-like games is the thing that really kind of is boring, right? Is, oh, I've got to run back to town right. and deal with all that stuff. And, and just like in Torchlight 1, they have this cool system with the pets where you can just say like, okay, I'm going to put all this stuff in my pet's inventory and tell him to go sell it. Um, and while he's in town, I'm even going to ask him to pick me up some extra health potions and maybe a couple identify scrolls and bring them back to me. And a minute or two later, he shows up and you get some more money and you're still off adventuring. But Torchlight 1, you'd have to go back to the hub world to get new missions and stuff like that, correct? Yeah, there's still there's still some like uh, having to go back to quest givers and stuff like that. But, um, but I do like... Uh, the freedom, uh, particularly, I think, for some people who may have been unhappy about what would what people have called like the linear nature of Diablo 3, um, I think Torchlight 2, right up from the outset, 
gives you lots of choices of what quests you're going to go on and which direction you're going to go on the map, and um, it just feels a little bit more choice-driven. Um, I think that's true to some extent. Well, and I died. Uh, <laughs> I think that's true to some extent, but uh, to be honest, it's it really feels much more just like the way that Diablo 2 was laid out. Sure. Which, and to be honest with you, most of this game feels like Runic, which is a lot of X, you know, Blizzard North guys, kind of said, you know what, screw it, let's just make Diablo 2 again. Right. Um, which is fine, and it's like, it's, you know, Diablo 2 minus a lot of some of the... Uh, some of the uh, unfortunate consequences of some of their design decisions there, but it, it feels like Diablo in a really profound way. Well, with that said, I'm seeing a lot of uh, people I follow on Twitter saying that it's their game of the year so far. They like it a lot more than Diablo 3. Uh, what's your take on it, Adam? Which which one do you like more so far at this point? You know, they're different games. I like different things about each of them. Um I like Torchlight in that it's a lot less... Like, Diablo, you feel constrained in a lot of ways when you're playing Diablo. Like, uh, like you, can only, you can only use these skills and, and, you know, the item properties never get all that crazy and that kind of thing. And in Torchlight, it's like... So I'm playing the Berserker, and one of the things that i am that I'm got going on is I have this passive that lets me... That does, like, a uh, uh, shatter storm whenever I kill something that's frozen. Right, and until I got that freeze attack, jeez. Oh my gosh, this is going really amazingly well, obviously. In all myself. fairness, those guys are gigantic. They're, They're real really big. big. Um, so they anyway, bubbles. I just recently got this freeze attack. That was a level 21 uh, unlock that I got. Until then, I didn't actually have anything that did freeze, but I was able to socket uh, some embers that did ice damage in my weapon and enable you know, my, my passive to fire off that way. He just turned into more dudes! <laughs> oh my gosh! Alright, we're gonna regroup a little bit. We're gonna summon some skeletons. We're gonna health potion the pet. Okay, so your oh. pet is a spider and a dog. Yep. Can you turn it into anything else, or did you just pick that one in specific? No, it's, uh, he actually has a, um, oh, they have a reflection shield. That's my problem. You, your pet is, is sort of like, uh, you have a kind of a core pet. But there's, you're constantly picking up these things that let your pet change into a different form. I think I had a goblin in the first one, or something oh, yeah? that was like a goblin. I, so you, my memory's so well, bad, but so as an example, you might start out with a panther or a dog or whatever. But you'll you'll uh, get these items that you can give to your pet. Fish. Um, you yeah, they're fish actual fish, uh, and the fish change their form for a limited time, and so there, there's some that are permanent. Oh, are there? I okay, found I haven't a permanent gotten one. any of those yeah. yet. Um, but suffice to say, you, it gives you a lot of flexibility to make the, the, the pet into the, the kind of form that you want. And they actually have different abilities to some degree and um, different things that they're good at. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Oh, gosh. So uh, this is really neat. I've, I've built my Berserker a lot like a, uh, a regular attacks. And then I have all these passive abilities that sort of fire off. And one of my things, you see it procking all the time here, is every time I hit something, I have a 50% chance to fire off chain lightning that hits everything. So, like, all this lightning stuff, that's just, it's its not quite a passive, it's basically a passive skill that huh. I have. It's hilarious. And things just explode when everything lines up. That was it's a lot great. of criticals. Yes, it was. Uh, what kind of weapons are you using there? Those look sweet. These are like claw weapons? Or? Um, uh, I believe I have one of them enchanted with ice um, for for that passive that I was talking about earlier. But they're claw weapons, so each weapon is kind of interesting. Each weapon, they don't just have different stats, but the weapon classes do different things. So like claw weapons, they don't have a splash area like, like a sword. You swing a sword and you hit everything in the arc. Claw weapons don't have anything like that, but what they do have is they, they ignore armor on what on the thing that they do hit. And like, uh, and so the different weapons have different uh, uh, sort of characteristics uh, for the different types, which is cool because in most of these games, you know, they're they're pretty much just stats. It's a lot of gold. Yeah, it is. It's, they do a great job of just feeding you fun stuff uh, to pick up around the world. And and you're right, Adam. The the different weapons really let you have an extra layer of customization to how you're going to play the game. So you might like in my class, my Outlander. I can run around with pistols, or I could run with, around with shotgun, um, and and it's gonna have a different feel to it and a different uh, approach to how I, I move into combat, which is pretty sweet. What level are you up to, Miller? Um, I think my character's up to ten. Oh uh, gosh. So, 
Uh, I'm, uh, which actually isn't that far. It's about three hours in, I think, somewhere in that range. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first torchlight, that was just like one big giant dungeon and you just yep. kept going deeper and deeper. Is that the same thing with Torchlight 2? No, big overworld. Well, not overworld is kind of overselling it a little bit, um, but a big outdoor kind of zone that connects the dungeons to each other. It's, once again, uh, Torchlight 1 to Torchlight 2 is pretty much exactly like Diablo 1 to Diablo 2. And, and to be honest, that that just that one change is one of the big things that I like better about Torchlight 2. Oh, it's great. Is this sense of, uh, in Torchlight 1, I always felt like it was it's sort of limited in scope and concept, and I was always just in a an dungeon, and it didn't look all that different. And here, they, there's this huge variety, even in the early levels that I've played, of the background environments that you're moving through. And in a game like this, where, you know, uh, a lot of the game is just about the sense of explor exploration that you're getting, that's pretty important. Uh, and so there's a lot of different monster types, a lot of different environments, and just a lot of cool details in the visual presentation of the game. From the animation of the characters, which if you're watching Adam real closely, like there's a lot of interesting little animations that the character does. This is their um, own engine, right? It's like the yeah. Ogre engine or something like yeah. that? So it's, it's just got this, this great look to it that sets itself apart from Diablo. And as long as you... Uh, you you're not totally in love with that really kind of darker sensibility that Diablo has, and you don't mind these kind of brighter, cartoony colors. I think it looks great. I agree. I've been extremely happy with the with the variety in this game. Um, you know, one thing, the one thing that I will say is that it's got a lot of variety in terms of the things that you fight, but they are a lot of variations on like melee enemy and archer right. enemy and that kind of thing, which is something that. Um, I think that one thing, the area that Diablo actually has a little bit of an advantage in that, like, pretty much the enemies in Diablo, all, there's every Whoa. one of them, oh my gosh. You're going to be fine, Adam. <laughs> Obviously. I believe in you. I actually might be fine. I am pretty awesome. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, when you fight different things in Diablo, they do really significantly different things. Right. Um, and I would say... But, I mean, that said, you know, I just said that, and now I'm like, these guys with their reflection shield, those are like nothing I've, I've seen before. When you get so a far. break from the action, Adam, I'd like you to pull up your skill screen, just because I think that's one other thing that's really... Oh, I want to talk that? about this guy real quick, actually. What is that? This is an enchanter. He's, they're just, they just randomly spawn out in the world, and they can add stuff to your weapons. He's and Ranger each Rick! <laughs> Or Rocket Raccoon. But it's awesome. Like, each of them have, like, a specialty. Like, the special ones that you find. There's do, there's generic ones in town. But, like, this guy will add, I'm, I'm guessing, like, defense and hit points and stuff to my armor. And they do it. The ones that you find out in the world are better than the ones in town. So, they're like, these wandering merchants, you get one shot to use them. It's pretty cool. Um, I was I was really excited when I saw that. Anyway, I'll pull up my skill screen here that uh, Miller wanted to talk about a little bit. And, yeah, the skill screen is awesome. Uh... Miller looks like he has something he wants to say, so well, I'll let just, him take it away. I, I think one of the things that's really uh, a, a big takeaway point when you look at this skill screen is uh, the variety that you have on tap for different things that you get, can get. And that's one of the, th and the other big things that makes it distinct from, from Diablo, uh, where y your, your choices really matter here, right? Like, you don't have a lot of flexibility to go back if you make mistakes. Not but a ton. Well, there's you, actually you have a little bit. You can repurchase the last three skills. Right. Well, and there's also console commands that you can you can respect your skills if you want to. Right. But but in general, there's this sense of it's a, there's a little bit more permanence of you building up a particular build of a character um, that's different from somebody else's build. Um, and uh, and while that might be as not as flexible in a given character. It, it does, uh, it's kind of exciting to feel like, yeah, I made this character who's really focused on melee, and he has this one healing skill that's really cool, that's really high level, um, and, uh, and that can lead to kind of a, a cool sense of what your character's like. And looking at that skill screen, uh, the last one unlock that I saw there was level 42 is the cap 50? 100. It's 100, whoa. Okay, so that was just the first of that, that set then, maybe. Uh, no, I think it, it's just you unlock the last one at level 42 or whatever, um, and then you just put more points in them what? after that. And that's pretty that's pretty standard for the uh, the Diablo-like genre. Well, and what Adam di uh, didn't pull up on that skill tree is that there's actually three different trees for your, your I character. Did. I, show, I oh. did. I just didn't talk about it because you were talking. Okay. <laughs> well, Jeez. There you go. So there's, these, there's actually three different paths. So even if you got the top level skill um, in a given tree, you could hop over to the other one. Uh, and check that out. 
Uh, so one thing that's that's definitely worth talking about in Torchlight 2 is multiplayer, which was the one thing that was missing from Torchlight 1 that everybody talked about, and rightfully so, because, I mean, these games are so awesome to play multiplayer, right? And so uh, Torchlight 2 has full uh, co-op. You can play with your buddies. You can play internet, LAN, single player. Four you can player? carry over. I believe it's four player, yeah. Uh, you carry over your same character um, and all that. The difference is that there's no like hosted games. There's no uh, dedicated servers to use a loaded, what has become a loaded term. <laughs> um, but uh, but you can you can just run your own game and, and uh, your friends can join and whatever and you can play LAN, uh, internet, anything, whatever. There's a matchmaking service um, that Runic runs. Runic's a developer, so and it came out September 20th. It's available now on Steam and, and, super and cheap. through their site and through everybody's <laughs> perfect world, all that stuff. Um, what uh, are there any plans to bring it to console like the first one? Have they said anything yet? You know, I don't think they've said anything uh, different than what they've pretty much said the whole time, which is that you know they were real happy with how Torchlight did on console, obviously because it, it was really successful on XBLA. Um, and what they've said is that you know we're a small company and we uh, we are going to make this version right now, and we'd love to have it on console, but you know we'll see. Um, I did, they have said also that uh, it's well above even the expanded size limits um, <laughs> that Microsoft imposes on so downloadable games. So that's that's another hurdle that this game will have to clear to make it to console. That said, I mean, I think everybody would like to see it on console. Um, it'd certainly play great. Um, there's nothing in my class here, uh, anything that I've played, that wouldn't feel great on a controller. And I really like the, the Torchlight XBLA conversion i thought they did a great job yeah i had a i had a blast playing that so yeah oh man i was hoping i was gonna find a boss down here to show off to you guys for this very special episode of test chamber but i don't see me oh, i love that skill so much <laughs> uh one of the cool things too is that you get um so skills you can put multiple points in them and all that kind of stuff right but what happens is that as you put more points into it you unlock these further tiers and you get tier bonuses uh, so like the the ice fissures thing that I'm doing here that actually gets another fissure once I get five points into it So it's not just more damage, right? It's it's additional stuff on top of that, which is something I think is really cool and You gotta love all the just crazy stuff going on on screen right now, yeah, right? Like rather all these it. crazy particle effects and different spell and weapon effect uh, What is with the dog and the the rainbow rings? Is that explained? Oh, he, yeah, he's, uh, that's actually a spell that I equipped on him. He, he improves his own elemental resistance, so that's just a graphic for the ele uh, resist elements buff. Oh, that's cool. It also makes him easier to spot on screen, which is really handy. <laughs> there, was one, there was one dungeon where I had fed him a fish that turned him into a uh, mole beast, I think, or a jackal beast or something. And, like, half of the monsters in the dungeon were jackal beasts. So I was constantly trying to attack my own pet. <laughs> which, which fortunately, you can't actually hurt him. He does a good... He does a, a fantastic job of dying on his own, though. So there's that to consider. But, uh, I mean, overall, like... I mean, I, I'm kind of bummed out by the lack of a of server-stored characters and dedicated servers and stuff like that, because that, that is kind of how I prefer to play these games. Right. Nonetheless, I mean, the actual game... Is real fun. I mean, I'm I'm not quite ready to review it yet uh, and and put a score on it or anything, right. but it's real fun. <laughs> I'm having a great time, as you can tell. Like, how about we just, just make a new nuts. rank for you that is just real fun, real fun. I would totally, if you want to convert to that review scale, mm -hmm. I am on board. I will, I will absolutely no numbers, do that. Just real crazy fun. adjectives. Yeah, that's right. Uber crappy to real fun. Now, <laughs> now if Uber's in there, then I ain't doing it, though. <laughs> man, even even is, with the umlaut. Uh, you're, even, you're not. With the, even with the umlaut, I'm off board. <laughs> that is just a word that has been abused to the point that I'm just, uh, I can't even deal with it anymore. <laughs> well, Adam, we'll leave you thinking about that and uh, <laughs> playing with your dog here. And uh, obviously, Torch Light 2 looks fantastic. Thanks for joining me, guys. And we'll see you on the next Test Chamber. <laughs>